Today, I'm going to replace the timing belt and water pump on the 2.7 liter V6 in this first generation Acura Legend that I picked up for only 350 bucks. So the first thing to do is take everything off of here. The top cover is held on with 10 millimeter nuts and so is the positive for the alternator. And then one more 10 millimeter nut on the front cover. Here's a closer look at those top covers. It's time to remove the alternator and power steering pump. There's a bolt here on the pivot point and an adjusting nut underneath that you can't see. One for the steering pump and another right here. First, loosen the pivot bolts. Then loosen the adjusting bolt behind the alternator. Now the belt tension is loose. I can rotate the alternator. Let's get the belt off of the pulley. Out of the way. And I'll remove the pivot bolt. All right, I have the pivot bolt out, but the adjustment bolt here is still keeping the alternator from coming out. You can see it's up against the power steering pump. I can't loosen it anymore. So I need to get the pump out of the way first. It's a tight fit in here. By the way, this is the first time I've done this job, so I downloaded the service manual from emanualonline.com. I'll be showing these diagrams when there's not enough room to get good video, which is often on this job because everything is packed in such a tight area. They offer an online dashboard version as well as a full downloadable PDF. You can use both on your desktop, laptop, phone, both actually work on my 11 year old iPad. I'll put a link for you in the description. If you look down below the power steering pulley, right there, that's the adjustment nut. And up on the back here, we have the pivot bolt. The adjustment nut felt kind of seized, so I hosed it with some PB blaster and loosened the pivot bolt first. Then I dropped the bolt, recovered it with the magnet, and after that, the adjustment bolt was ready to come out. Here is the pivot bolt and the adjustment nut from under the pulley. Now, if you look back there, you can see the adjustment bolt still going through the bracket and the pump. So I'm gonna pull that bolt out through the back. With that bolt removed, I could now move the pump out of the way. Now I'm able to fully loosen and remove the adjustment bolt for the alternator. Even with no bolts holding the alternator in place, it was still a lot of work to get it out. So after I removed the steering pump, pushed it out of the way, I got the adjusting bolt. Check this out. So here is the big old pivot bolt on the alternator. And over here is the adjusting nut. Now this bolt here is what raises the alternator up and down to put tension on the belt. So I turned this clockwise until it came out. Actually, I took this nut off first. It's easier with the adjustment bolt still in place. Then this weird bolt can come out from the bracket. And there's very little room to work back here. So I'm going to keep all this together so none of it gets lost. All right, I have two belts off so far. And there is the belt and tensioner for the AC compressor belt. And that's the outermost belt on the crank pulley. And the tensioner was seized up, but some taps with a hammer got it loose. After loosening the tensioner bolt, it should be looking about like this. And now I'm loosening the nut on the tensioner pulley itself. Ratcheting wrenches are definitely a huge time saver on this job. And there it is right there. Now I can release the tension and get this belt out of here. Next I need to unbolt this motor mount bracket here. Then I can get this power steering belt out of the way and get some more room in here to work. Before I unbolt that mount, I need to support the weight of the engine using this hook here. And I'm going to use my hoist there to do that job. In my younger and uh, sometimes dumber days, I would have put a beam across the engine bay and chained the hook to that. 
but that's sketchy and I have the tools to do it right now. If this engine slips, it could crush my arm down in there. Something strange I noticed, this hook is missing one of the mounting bolts. I'm going to have to get a bolt in there before I can support the engine. The other one's back there. I guess someone was in a hurry at some point. I found another bolt the same size and thread pitch in my Toyota parts bin. Important note here, on the back bolt of this bracket, there's a little metal tab that goes under the bolt. And that tab holds this adjustment bolt in place and keeps it from pushing through when you're trying to thread the nut on from the other side. Next I got out the hoist, but didn't leave myself enough room, so I had to push the car back. Then the legs were too tall to fit under the car, so I had to jack up the car to gain some clearance, which worked out because I had to remove the passenger wheel soon anyways. Then I unbolted the splash shield from the wheel well to gain access to the crank pulley. And remove the old belts. Back up in the engine bay. Now I can remove the two bolts attaching the motor mount to the engine bracket. Now with the mount detached, I can lift it up a little bit. And slide the power steering belt through the gap. And I'm going to have to pull this off from below. Jammed in there. Toss this guy in the trash. Now it's time to remove the upper covers. Got the front one here and the back one here. Let's do the front first. Let's see, I've got a bolt here, a bolt there, and one down there. These were all 10 millimeter bolts and I removed them with a combination of quarter inch ratchet and a ratcheting wrench. If your hands are bigger than mine, you are not gonna have fun doing this. Um, take a look down here. I unplugged two sensors there. They were right here. And I can get this out of the way now. Just kind of bend it aside. And this should be ready to come out. But it's not. Okay, way down there, I don't think you can even see it, but there's another 10 millimeter bolt. Yeah, I'll show the diagram for this one. So there's four bolts on the front upper cover. And now the cover is free. There's a better look at that fourth bolt. So these four long ones here held on the cover. And that little guy, that was just holding the dipstick there. There's a peek at the front cam gear with the slots in it. Now on the back cover, got a bolt on top, one in the back there with a clip on it, and one right there. I removed those off camera since you can't see down there anyways. Here's that back bolt that has the wire clip on it. Now this should be ready to come out. That wasn't bad at all. And there's the rear cam gear. Now, I've got a 17 millimeter socket to remove the crank pulley bolt. Hmm, nope. I'm gonna have to use the old starter method. I have a whole video on how to use the starter to loosen the crank bolt. Link is in the description. I wrenched on a lot of D-Series Honda engines back in the day, which rotate counterclockwise, backwards compared to most engines. So first, I wanted to double check to see if this V6 rotated clockwise. And it does. So I have this breaker bar in place. You can see it's on the pulley bolt there. I needed a short extension to get it in the right place. And the bar is going to hit on the control arm. So when the crank spins clockwise, that bolt will be stationary and loosen itself. The filter is right here, so I don't want the bar over there. It could smash it. I have it on the outside of this arm. Oops, accidentally started the engine. Should have pulled the uh, plug wires off first. But there's the bolt. Now, I can pull off the crank pulley. 
Notice the Woodruff key here. There's a better look at it right there. Be sure not to lose that. That keeps the pulley in place at top dead center. It will come off in a bit when I remove the old timing belt and the crank gear. You can see some bolts on the cover. That weird long one is to adjust the tensioner. All these 10 millimeter ones are holding on the lower timing cover. So I've got two short bolts out here. Then there's a longer bolt here. The short ones go here. And the long one goes up here. There's another bolt back in here. I can't see it, but I can feel it. I only know about it thanks to the diagram. I got the other bolts out off camera since they're not visible anyways. There's eight total. I was able to pop the lower cover off, but it's hitting the AC idler pulley. And it's definitely not coming out. No matter what. So my only option is to remove that idler pulley. There were two bolts that held this on. Put the pulley over here, out of the way. Now this should come out. Nope. One big advantage to having the engine chained to the hoist is I can tilt this side up. And that gave me a little more room over here to squeeze my hand in. And pull out the cover. Almost. Move this vacuum line. And pull out the cover through the top. There's where all the bolts were. I can tilt the engine back down level now. Take the stress off of the other mounts. So look at this. Coolant and a lot of grime. I'd say I've got a leaking water pump. I'd find a small puddle of coolant under the car sometimes, and this is why. So it's a good thing I'm doing this. Next, I removed all the spark plugs so that there won't be any compression in any of the cylinders. And that's going to make it a lot easier to rotate the engine by hand when I set everything to top dead center before removing the old timing belt. It's important that I set the engine to top dead center before going any farther so I can keep the mechanical timing correct. I'm going to rotate this cam gear clockwise. I can check cylinder 1 to be sure everything is at top dead center. And on this V6, cylinder number 1 is back here. You can see I've got a long screwdriver in the plug hole. What I want is the tip of the screwdriver resting on the piston and it will rise up as the number one piston reaches top dead center. Over here on the cam gear, you can see there are four slots in the gear. And there's also a mark here that should be facing straight up at top dead center. So there's two ways to be sure I'm at top dead center. And to rotate that cam gear, I have this tool, homemade. I originally made this to hold the pulley on the 7 Series engine. But it just so happens that the spacing on two of these bolts is the same as the slots in this cam gear. And there's an actual special service tool made for this job that you can buy. But I'm saving a few bucks here. Rather than go a full revolution clockwise, I'm just turning it backwards a little bit. Because it's so close. And that's good. The mark is facing up. So if I'm looking straight from the side, this is what I want to be seeing here. And back here, you can see the screwdriver moved up. So there's the proof that the number one cylinder is at top dead center. What you could also do to be sure it's at exact top dead center is put a piece of tape on the screwdriver flush with the valve cover and rotate the engine a little bit in each direction and see if the screwdriver goes up any farther. All right, now the engine is at exact top dead center. My screwdriver is all the way up, mark facing up here, and there's actually a mark on the back one too, there. And last but not least, down underneath, the key is facing up. I can get this guide out of the way. Now, keep everything where it is and the timing will be spot on. Before I go any farther, 
It's definitely a good idea to disconnect the battery. That way, when the timing belt's off, for whatever reason, if the car were to crank over, there won't be a risk of pistons hitting valves because the timing is off. Which is also what happens if your timing belt were to break while driving. Okay, now we can get down to business. I've got this wrench here on the bolt for the timing tensioner. There's a better view. I need to loosen that. And there's barely any room to work in here let alone film myself doing it. And here's that bolt removed. Now the tensioner pulley can move, but it's still held in place uh, with tension from this spring. I gotta pull the spring off that perch. And for that, I have some vice grips. I've got it latched onto the spring like this. After the spring is off, the tensioner is loose. And so is the belt. Pull this off now. Now I can get this old belt out of here. This timing belt looks great. Doesn't look like it uh, had a lot of miles on it. But I know it's at least 10 years old because the car sat for a decade. So it's time for a new one. Here's a look at the new water pump. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts. And this is for the tensioner. Look at all that crud on the old one from leaking coolant. It's time to drain the coolant. Crack that open. That'll help this flow a little faster. While that's draining, I'm under here loosening all the water pump bolts. Dropping 10 millimeter sockets. There's really no point in trying to film this part. Not like there's any way to see what I'm doing. I can't even see some of these bolts. Just going by feel on some of them. Putting it in the new pump as I go. And these two bolts were larger than the others. I've got one left to go. And there's the last bolt right there. I'm actually able to show you this one. I found it was easier to crack them loose with a ratchet and then loosen them by hand with this deep quarter inch socket. Just because there's not a lot of room to swing a ratchet in here. I've got my wife's favorite baking sheet ready to catch some coolant. I cleaned up all that oil and grime too with some prep spray. Here's a look at all the water pump bolts. Aside from those two large ones, all the other ones are the same length. So no worry if you get those mixed up. And get ready for a mess. Oh. I should have got a deeper pan. Still draining. Oh, this is gonna make a mess. And here is the water pump. Yeah. So look at the area where the seal was around the perimeter of the water pump. That's a lot of corrosion. No wonder it was leaking. I've gotta clean that up. So I've been scrubbing away with this scratch pad for what feels like eternity. And it's getting better. I've got a lot right there to clean up still. But it's getting there. I see I still have some grime behind this pulley. You can just slide this right off. Then here's that pen. Put that somewhere safe. And there's the other guide. Notice these are beveled on one edge. The beveled side faces the belt. Now I can clean this up. Then I reassembled it in the opposite order I took it apart. Next I cleaned the new water pump and gasket to be sure there wasn't any oil or contaminants from the factory or my hands. But I had a hard time reaching down in the cramped engine bay to get the water pump positioned in place because the rubber gasket kept moving out of place. So I dripped some coolant on the rubber gasket and that helped it stay in place. Then I was able to thread a couple of bolts in with one hand while I held the water pump against the block with the other hand. Here's the new tensioner and the old one side by side. This one's made in Japan by Koyo. That's good for a peace of mind compared to a bearing that says made in China on it. 
Solve the tensioner by threading in the bolt by hand so it could still adjust. Now I just need to figure out the best way to stretch the bottom of that spring over to this perch. There wasn't enough room to show that on camera, but what I did was use this hook tool. I don't even know what this is. But I hooked the end of the spring, stretched it over the perch, and slid it over. And it worked on the first try. Okay, I've got my new timing belt here, and what I like to do to help the belt slide on easier over the gears is spray it down with some lube. I'm all out of WD-40, but this PB Blaster should work fine. Just kidding, that's the old belt. You wanna be sure that you don't get any oil or grease on the new belt, because that can shorten its life, or even cause it to slip. So be sure everything is clean. Cam gears, tensioner, water pump, crank gear. Around the tensioner. I need more slack to get the belt over the crank pulley. I've got good tension there. It's tight there and there. It was close, but just didn't seem long enough to slip over the crank pulley gear. This isn't working. I'm thinking the back cam gear should be the last thing I try to slide the belt onto. So I put the timing belt on the front cam gear first, then the crank, then the tensioner and water pump, and then I was finally able to stretch it over the back cam gear. All right, this was not easy. The crank pulley was off by about half a tooth, and that put a little too much slack here. So I turned this a tiny bit to take out that slack, which tightened this up a little here, but was enough to get me an extra tooth of belt that I needed here. Then I stretched around the tensioner and I was finally able to pull the belt over this cam gear. What a pain. But everything feels nice and tight now, just like the old one did. I still have to push this belt on the gears a little farther. Tensioner feels good. I'll push the belt the rest of the way on and then check the timing. I turned the cam gear a little to make sure everything was good. I'm pretty close to top dead center, maybe a tiny bit off here. I'd like to get the tensioner set before I do a final timing check. Remember, beveled edge faces the timing belt. I'm going to set this crank pulley on here for now, since it's easy to grab onto and turn by hand. I can rotate it clockwise and get the slack out of the belt between the front cam and the crank pulley. Now that slack in the belt has rotated to where the tensioner is, and I'm gonna tighten that 12 millimeter bolt. That one right there. And that's gonna set the tensioner in place. So now the slack is out of there, and that's really tight. That's kinda of loose right there though. And so is that. And that part goes under the water pump. So I'm going to have to rotate it some more by hand with my tool here. And get that area of slack to the tensioner. Okay, look, that's tight now. And the slack in the belt has moved down here. I need to go a little farther and get the slack to the tensioner side. I'm tight here again, but... Now it's loose up here again. I rotated too far. I went around some more and now I'm a little loose here and kind of tight here. But if I push the belt here, it draws the slack from this side. Now if I push here, it draws the slack back from the other side. It's actually moving the crank pulley about half a tooth. So with the slack on the tensioner side, I loosened the tensioner bolt. Now I'm just getting it tightened back up. And now it's tight here. And very tight there. Tight there. And it's tight there. Tight everywhere. I'm gonna give it another rotation to check timing. Right now the mark is at six o'clock, so I'll turn it 180 degrees. I should have mentioned this earlier when I set everything to top dead center 
Even though the crank pulley is at top dead center, it's actually 180 degrees off from the cam gear. You can see the mark on the cam gear is at 6 o'clock. Every time the cam gear rotates 180, the crank pulley turns 360. I rotated the cam gear 180 to top dead center. Loosened the tensioner and tightened it again for good measure. 31 pound feet. Next, I double checked the marks on both of the cam gears and the position of the crank pulley and the position of the screwdriver and the number one cylinder spark plug hole, just like I showed earlier in the video. And everything lined up together to be at top dead center. This is a crucial step to ensure that the timing isn't off by a tooth or two. I'm done with this for a bit. Next, I tilted the engine up a little to make more room to install the lower timing cover. I don't remember if I pointed this out earlier or not, but on the lower timing cover bolts, there are two that are shorter than the rest. And these two short bolts go in these bottom two holes here. All these cover bolts only get torqued down to seven pound feet. After installing the lower timing cover, install the AC tensioner pulley. Then I install the upper rear timing cover. And don't forget the back bolt has the clip for the harness. And then I installed the upper front timing cover, being sure the plastic tab goes behind the lower cover. And now I can put the crank pulley back on. And this bolt gets tightened to 83 pound feet. Before I can attach this engine mount, I need the belt for the power steering because I have to slide it through this space between the bracket and the mount. And here is my new power steering belt. I tilted the engine to make more room to slide the belt under the mount. Now that I've got the belt in place here, I can tighten the mount bolts to 40 pound feet. Next, I reinstall the power steering pump. Just hand tight for now. The pivot bolt will get 28 pound feet of torque and the adjustment bolt will get 16 pound feet of torque when fully tightened. If you look at the power steering pump on the back of this tab, there's a half inch square. I can use a breaker bar on that to hold tension on the belt while tightening the pump adjustment bolt. Now it's time for the alternator. This one should be fun. I've got the pivot bolt and the adjustment bolt thingy. Pivot bolt obviously goes here and the adjustment bolt has to go through here like this. Next I got the hoist out of the way. I tried for a while to get the adjustment bolt to go through the bracket and the alternator, but no matter what, I just couldn't get everything lined up. If there's a certain process to reinstall the alternator that I didn't know about, please let me know in the comments. I tried both raising and lowering the adjustment bolt with no luck. There's just not enough room behind the alternator to hold the adjustment bolt with my hand. So I figured I could remove the engine hoist hook to free up some space and fit my hand behind the alternator to hold the adjustment bolt while I line everything up. However, there was a slight issue with that plan. Okay, this is frustrating. I'm still trying to install the alternator and I can't get this adjustment bolt through. My hand is about three times too big to fit where I need to hold the bolt steady. So I think if I unbolt this hook, I can have enough room to work. I'm only able to hold this bolt at the top and it's not working. So taking that hook out is the only way I can see this working. Another issue, even with a universal, I still can't get to the back bolt. The power steering pump is in the way. So I need to loosen that back up, move the power steering pump back out of the way, and then I should be able to reach that back bolt. Then without the hook there, I have to retension the power steering and then install the alternator and get the tension set on that. I just won't have a way to reinstall the hook afterwards. Maybe, just maybe, that's why there was only one bolt holding in to begin with. It all makes sense now. Look at that, so much room for activities. I'll just toss this in a Ziploc bag with the bolts and keep it in the trunk for the next unfortunate soul that has to do a time bell on this engine. Moving on. That was exactly what I needed to do to gain enough space to install the adjusting bolts for the alternator. So after the hook is removed, you'll have about this much room to work. This was enough for my average size hand to hold the bolt and slide it in place. Now I just need to adjust the tension on these belts. 
That's power steering on the smallest pulley in the back, alternator belt in the middle, and the AC belt on the outside. Once the power steering pump is pulled up and tightened, I'll have a little more room to tighten the alternator adjusting bolt to seven pound feet. And then tighten the nut on this side to 17 pound feet. Then torque the pivot bolt to 33 pound feet. I'm tightening the steering pump adjusting bolt and the pivot bolt. Now I'm adjusting the tension on the alternator and tightening the pivot bolt. But I had a little trouble tightening the nut on the end of the adjustment bolt. So the belt for the power steering is kind of in the way to tighten the nut for the alternator. You can see I got it, but it was a tight fit. I really had to press against the power steering belt. I ended up using this uh, quarter inch ratchet with this tiny extension and a short socket. And that made it a little bit easier. And we're good. On to the AC belt. AC belt is on. Now I'm just adjusting the tension. And after the belt is tight, torque the pulley bolt down to 32 pound feet. Next I reinstall the plastic cover on top of the front upper timing cover and then the second cover over the alternator and power steering pulleys. And reattach the mounting points for the engine wiring harness. Reconnected the alternator and move the vacuum line back in place. If you look down in here, you can see I plugged these two connectors back in up front here. These guys only get tightened to seven pound feet. Plug this in, tighten the positive. All this is back where it belongs. I have the vacuum line back where it goes, like this. The spark plugs are still out, and I'll get those in a bit because I'm going to get new ones. It's the ideal time to replace those. And since I know they're at least 10 years old, it's also the ideal time to replace coolant hoses and the thermostat, since I already drained the coolant. After doing the cooling system, I picked up some NGK 5632 spark plugs. I checked the gap on each one and they were all perfect out of the box. All right, everything is back together. I checked it all over twice and now it's time for the first start. And she runs perfect. I do still need to burp any air from the coolant. Man, it sounds good. It should. I've thrown a lot of new parts at this car over the past year. And I can't wait to finally drive this legend on the road. It's a good idea to let it idle for a bit and then take a look under the car. Nope, no leaks. Time to get this legend on the road. Do me a huge favor and give this a thumbs up if you found it helpful that really helps the channel grow. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions and consider subscribing for more how-to videos and project vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage. Thanks for watching.